This is the third section, chapter five, and here we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing for the difference between means. Now, if we have the means x bar and y bar, where the distributions of x and y are independent, and the distribution of the sample mean of x is normally distributed with its own mean and variance, and the uh, sample means distribution for y is also normally distributed with its own mean and variance, then we can carry out a hypothesis test on the difference between the two means, x bar and y bar. Now, when we do this hypothesis test, h0 is always going to be that the means are the same, that they're equal, and h1 is going to be either that they're not equal to each other or one is greater than or less than the other. And the way that we test to see whether we accept or reject H0 is by calculating our test statistic at Z, which we do by doing this calculation here. Here's our formula. Now you're gonna get your critical value. That's gonna tell you whether you accept or reject H0 based on the value of the test statistic by comparing this value of Z with the Z value from our percentage points table or from your calculator. And we need to remember that these can be upper tail or lower tail tests or even two tail tests. So drawing a diagram might help. So for example, if we were doing a test at the, um, let's say 5% level of significance. So that would be 95% over here and it was an upper tail test, so we'll be looking at this part here, uh, that'll be our critical region, then our upper value here would be 1.96. So if our value of Z is greater than 1.96, we would reject H0. There's evidence to suggest there is a difference between the means. And if our value of Z that we calculated, our test statistic was less than 1.96, we'd accept H0, suggesting there's evidence that there um, is no difference between the two means. So sometimes a little diagram like this might help. And just a last point that even if uh, the means of X and Y, the sample means are not normally distributed, then as long as N is large, then by the central limit theorem, we can still carry out this hypothesis test. So as long as N is large, even if the mean sample means of X and Y are not normally distributed, then central limit theorem says this still applies. So we can still carry out this hypothesis test on the difference between two means. Example 10, the weights of boys and girls in a certain school are known to be normally distributed with standard deviations, 5 kg and 8 kg respectively. A random sample of 25 boys had a mean weight of 48 kg and a random sample of 30 girls had a mean weight of 45 kg. Stating your hypothesis clearly, test at the 5% significance level, or level of significance, whether there's evidence that the mean weight of the boys in the score is greater than the mean weight of the girls. So I'll start by writing my formula down here that I'm going to use. And then before I start writing down H0 or anything like that, I'm going to write down the values that I've been given in the question. Right, so these are all written down. These are uh, values. Then we start by writing down H0 and H1. Now H0 is going to be that there is no difference between the mean weight of the boys and the girls. You could write boys or girls. I'm just shortening it here. And it's always going to be this when we're hypothesis testing for the difference between the means. H0 is always going to be that there is no difference between the means. And H1, it says we're looking to see whether the mean weight of the boys is greater than the mean weight of the girls. So this is going to be an upper tail test. So now we're going to calculate Z. That's going to be equal to X bar 48 minus Y bar 45 and then minus the population weight for the boys and the girls. Now, we don't need to know, know those, actually, because 
Whenever we do a hypothesis test, we, teach, we test H0. And what have we said in H0? That these population means are the same. We're assuming they're the same. same. We're doing a test on that. So if they're the same, then when we subtract one from the other, we're going to get zero. And that's always going to be the case for the top part of the calculation. It's always going to be minus zero. It's always going to be that. And then divided by the square root of, so we want the standard deviation of the boys, five squared, sorry, the variance of the boys, five squared, over the sample for the bo uh, boys, 25, plus the variance for the girls, eight squared, over the sample for the girls, which is 30. So um, from our calculators, we get 1.694798 and so on. So this is where our little drawing of a normal distribution helps. It's an upper tail test. It's 5%, which means that this area down here is 95%. And then we can use our calculator or the percentage points tables to work out the critical value. Personally, I probably just prefer to use my calculator. We'll go to inverse normal. We'll type in an area of 95% because we always want the area from the left. We'll type in the value of our, or we just use the standard normal distribution. And that will give me a value of 1.6. 4485. Okay, so that is my critical value. Now we compare our calculated value of Z with our critical value and our calculated value of Z, our test statistic 1.64798 is greater than our critical value, which means this value of Z is now in this critical region here, which means we're going to reject H0 which means there is evidence that the mean weight of the boys is greater than the mean weight of the girls. Example 11. The weights of boys and girls in a certain school are known to be normally distributed with standard deviations 5 kg and 8 kg respectively. A random sample, let's highlight these here, underline these, a random sample of 25 boys had a mean weight of 48 kg and a random sample of 30 girls had a mean weight of 45 kg. Stating your hypothesis clearly, test at the 5% significance level, level of significance, whether there is evidence that the mean weight of the boys in the school is more than 2 kg greater than the mean weight of the girls. Now this is very similar to the last question, apart from this last bit. Here's the difference. So we're not testing to see whether um, one is greater or less than the other, but that it's more th it's more than two kg greater, or the mean weight of the boys is more than two kg greater than the mean weight of the girls. So I've written down my formula. I've written down the values that are given in the question. We just need to think carefully about what H0 is and what H1 is. Now, if you're not sure about H0, it may be actually easier to start with H1. Because we know with H1 that the mean weight of the boys is more than 2 kg greater than the mean weight of the girls. In other words, the difference between them, the weight of the mean weight of the boys minus the mean weight of the girls is more than 2. Now, once we've got this, it's easy to work out H0 because you basically replace that sign symbol with an equal sign. So the mean weight of the boys minus the mean weight of the girls is equal to 2. So if you're never sure about what to write for H0, sometimes you can start with H1. That's fairly straightforward to work out from that sentence and just replace that sign with an equal sign. And there we go, got H0. Now we're going to work out our value of Z here. So that's going to be 48 minus 45, again, minus 0 which would be the case if the means were the same. But what are we saying about the difference between the means here? It's actually two. If we went to the previous example, you could write this as mean of boys minus mean of girls equals zero. So we'd get that here. But now we're saying the difference between them is two. 
So actually, what we write down here is 2. So that just matches up basically with what we've got written here for H0. And we're we'll carrying with the bottom of the calculation. So here we're going to have the variance of the boys, 5 squared, over the sample size for the boys, which is 25, plus the variance of the girls, which is 8 squared, divided by the sample size for the girls, which is 30. So if we work this out, um, we actually get 1 at the top divided by that number at the bottom, and that will give us 0 0.56493. So there's our value of Z. Now we're testing at 5% significance level, and it's going to be an upper tail test again. So using your little diagram and the calculator or the percentage points table, that gives you a critical value of 1.6449. So we can compare now our value of Z, our test statistic, which is 0 0.5649. This is less than our critical value, 1.6449. So therefore we can accept H0. There is insufficient evidence to suggest that the um, mean weight of the boys is two kilograms greater than the mean weight of the girls. Let's just highlight that and then we move on. Example 12. A manufacturer of personal stereos can use batteries made by two different manufacturers. The standard deviation of lifetimes for never die batteries is 3.1. Standard deviation, never die batteries 3.1, and for everlasting batteries 2.9 hours. Everlasting batteries 2.9 hours. A random sample of 80 never die batteries and a random sample of 90 everlasting batteries were tested, and their mean lifetimes were 7.9 hours and 8.2 hours respectively stating your hypothesis clearly test at the five percent level of significance whether or not there is evidence of a difference between the mean lifetimes of the two makes of batteries right so here's my formula here are my values the top row here represents the values for the never die batteries so there's sub n and the bottom row here represents the values for the everlasting batteries where I've used sub E. So I'll start off by writing H0 and H1. So here we're talking about um, whether there's evidence of a difference. So we'll have not equal to here for H1. So here's my calculation. I've already done it on my calculator. This time I get a negative, so I'm minus 0.64915. Now this is where we uh, draw our little normal distribution. It's a two-tail test. So we split the 5% significant level to 2.5% using the percentage points table our calculators. Calculators will give us 1.9599, but you may recognize that as the 1.96 and a negative 1.96. So those are our critical values. So comparing our value of Z with our critical values here, we can see that uh, our value of Z is not in the critical region. It's going to be in this area here. These are the critical regions over here, greater than 1.96, less than minus 1.96. So since it's not in the critical region, we're going to accept H0. There's insufficient evidence to suggest that the mean uh, lifetime of the two makes of the batteries um, are different, or the mean time of never die is different to the mean time of the everlasting battery. So you should now be able to do exercise 5C on pages 130 to 131 of the textbook.